Good afternoon everybody. Time for another food episode of our channel. Seeing as we still can't camp because it's winter and well sounds like the campgrounds are closed for a while yet. Anyways so this is not only a good recipe that you can do at home but it's one that you can definitely do with your RV and you can do it on your grill. That's the best thing. And if you got a smoker on your in your RV or with your RV or in your campground that's even better. So stick around. Be right back. Today is meatloaf day. So this isn't your this isn't your father's meatloaf. <laughs> uh, you'll learn with us that we like to kick things up a notch uh, to coin a phrase of another famous chef that's a, I'm a huge fan of, Emeril Lagasse. Anyways, um, some simple things you're gonna need to do this is some ketchup, uh, some Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Everybody, let's talk about that for a second. What does this say? Worcestershire. And I've got friends in England and they call it Worcester sauce. They said that's the right way to say it and being as that's British, they call it Worcester sauce. Let's all call it that. You're going to need some milk. You're going to need, I use uh, yellow onions, uh, some garlic, pepper, that's black uh, pepper in the grinder. Um, love this stuff. Uh, honey bacon barbecue from Meat Church. Uh, we're going to kick it up with some heat with some backdraft from Code 3, one of my absolute favorite spices. Also from Me Church, we've got Holy Gospel. We're going to put some of that in there too. You're going to need some smoked paprika. And I also like to use smoked sea salt. So those are the basics. And you're saying, Brad, what's that? Well, that is my perforated pan because I don't like to use a loaf pan, and I'm gonna tell you why. I know I'm definitely not the only one out there that's, uh, I'm a big texture guy. Um, food can taste fantastic, but if the texture is, doesn't agree with me, then, you know, I, don't, I mm -mm, not eating it. <laughs> so, uh, so texture and appearance. Uh, you eat with your eyes first, right? That's, you know, every, every, every foodie will tell you, you eat with your eyes first. So, yeah, you know, I'm not a great plater, but um, I like my food to look good. So anyways, the reason I have the perforated pan is because when you, I simply, I literally build my meatloaf on that by hand. I form it by hand. You'll see that in this video. And then I put it in my smoker, in the Traeger that way, um, because that way all the grease leaks out of that. And it goes to the drip tray that goes in the little pail anyway. So why would you want your meatloaf swimming in that fat? It just... You know what, when this is done, this meatloaf is going to be so juicy anyway, we're not going to dry this out. You're not going to dry it out in that smoker. Um, so check this out. And those pans are about six bucks. So when you see this video, you're going to go, I'm buying one of those pans. So anyways, be right back and we'll get rocking. Okay, epic fail number one. There's my hamburger. I forgot to take my hamburger out. So here's a pro tip from me. Uh, I will not microwave my hamburger. Because when you start to microwave meat, even on defrost, I don't care, it starts cooking that meat a little bit. And if it starts to turn that slightest bit of brown, it's you're altering the texture and the density of that meat and its molecular structure, which sounds complicated, but it's not. And you need that raw meat with all that fat in there, thawed out nice so that all of those wonderful spices can actually infuse through all your meat. And that's critical. That's, hey, that's what, you know what? You want your flavor everywhere in the meat. You don't want to just flavor the outside of the meat and, you know, you might as well just pour a bottle of ketchup on a steak. 
<laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. So 30 minutes in the sink in cold water, people, not hot water. Um, food safety is what plays in here. That, that meat will be thawed out and ready to go in 30, 40 minutes tops. So I'll be right back. Okay, so how many people caught on to something that I did not tell you about that was on the stove picture? Don't scroll back, that's cheating. So, here it is. Bacon puffs, that's right. So nobody said this was going to be particularly healthy, but what meatloaf is particularly healthy, it's good. It's comfort food, that's what we're here for. That's what camping's about. So, yeah, you should have some healthy stuff too, but... This is the game changer for meatloaf, people. Now, all you have to do is put them in a Ziploc bag, crunch them all up. Instead of putting in, you know, some people use uh, soda biscuits or crackers, soup crackers, whatever, or breadcrumbs for a binder. Bacon puffs, game changer. Okay, so basically I just take some pork rinds and stick them in a Ziploc. I leave a corner open so I can get the air out and then once I have all the air out of there then I'll just finish that seal and then you take literally anything so let's pick anything let's use an onion you don't need tools you don't have to buy expensive stuff we're gonna chop this onion up anyway oh listen to that crunch so you just basically you're gonna make a quick trip around the bag Make them nice and fine. Get that one I missed right there. There's no need to beat on this or anything crazy like that. Okay, so this part is going to bug everybody to death. And the reason it's going to bug everybody to death is this, is this is how I cook. And for a guy with some OCD issues, um, like my pantry, you'll see, perfectly lined up, all English forward. Not quite alphabeticalized. I'm not that far gone yet, but... When I make meatloaf, there's no measuring. There's, I just know, I, <laughs> and I apologize for that, been cooking for a long time. So I just, I just hammer it with stuff and I just know how much it's gonna take to taste really good. So follow along if you need to make measurements. I do have an actual recipe um, that does give you the quantities, but when you're watching me do this, none of that's happening except for the eggs and the milk and that might be it <laughs> everything else is just hammering it to it so here we go and i apologize in advance so i've got my bowl nice big bowl nice big bowl give yourself lots of room to work it's full with uh, the three pounds of fresh hamburger and basically what i'm going to do is so i'm going to start with i'm just going to hit it with some worcester sauce remember that worcester okay i'm literally just going to hit it okay so that's probably a couple of good tablespoons. And then I'm going to hit it with some uh, Holy Gospel. And literally, I'm just going to sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. you got a lot of meat here, okay? So that, I know that I know that my backdraft has some heat, and I don't want to get too carried away. Um, so I'm going to give it probably what I would call the equivalent of two tablespoons of that. And... And then the uh, meat church, the honey bacon barbecue, boy, that's 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 like the code three stuff. So I'm gonna give that probably oh two good tablespoons as well. And I'm calling it that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The reason is that adds some nice sweetness. And now I'm gonna add what's probably a good good tablespoon of smoked paprika. Okay, and then I'm gonna give it about oh. 10 good grinds of uh, the smoked sea salt. And the reason I'm not going to add a ton of that is these other spices do have salt in them, so I don't want to get too carried away. And now your fresh peppercorn, I'm going to give it lots of good, okay, good 10 twists of that times two. Love the black pepper. Okay, so now I'm going to mix this all up by hand, and then I'm going to add the chopped onion, the garlic the uh, uh, egg and milk and then a little and, and my 
game changer. Remember. And we're gonna take it from there and form it out. So it's been a few minutes. I'm pretty much mixed up there, but my wife just texted me, Lisa. You guys have met my wife, Lisa. She's working today, so this was a surprise for her when I get home, but it wasn't really a surprise because she's like, what are we gonna do for supper? I'm starved, so I told her, smoking a meatloaf, and she got all excited. And she said, are you making it the same as last time? And I said, yes. And she said, that was really good. And I said, good, I love you, and was gonna go downstairs and got a live stream to do with uh, Weekend RV and tonight. And she said, baby, because she calls me baby, and I like that. I said, she said, uh, why don't you kick it up like you do? So I said, okay, I have something new that I got in the mail from Dixon down in Ontario not too long ago. Bam! Five Monkeys Scotch Whiskey Barbecue Sauce. Five Monkeys has some heat to it, and that Scotch Whiskey. Oh, they're original. They're orange, orange, uh... Oh boy, here we go, orange. Now I have to look. Okay, now here's where the magic happens. So I've got my pan with the holes in, so uh, pro tip, I do actually use a little bit of uh, no stick spray, and I like the olive oil kind. I'm sorry, I guess that's a little bright. But uh, yeah, olive oil just keeps the meatloaf from sticking to your pan. And here it's all hand forming. So we have all the ingredients together, and we have our three pounds of beautiful seasoned meatloaf and I'm just gonna work this and I'm gonna turn around and you use whatever means you like um, I keep it away from the edges just a little bit try to make it somewhat uniform um, I try not to get it too pointy at the ends and that way you don't get a big uh, a big spot where it's going to overcook quick or anything funny so here we go we got a pretty uniform loaf there there look at that one meatloaf how simple was that do this in your rv in no time so let's head out to the smoker okay so meatloaf's in thermal probes in and we're gonna we're gonna have this bad boy set on 180 right now which is what it's exactly at almost 177 so I have the lid open and always pro tip double check your pellet load Excellent. so now that the meatloaf's been in there at 180 for about 40 minutes we're gonna take and crank this up to 325 and we want to get an internal temperature on that meat of 155 when we hit 155, what we'll do is we will uh, go ahead and turn it up to 375 and we'll put some sauce or a favorite kind of sauce on top of there and let that set up nice and tacky for about 10 minutes. All right, so now we're up to 155 internal. Said we're going to use the uh, five monkeys. And we're gonna use a scotch whiskey. So now that you're at 155, you're gonna to wanna to give this a good bath. I got my silicone brush. And I'm just gonna dress the whole outside of this. And you can see it's not swimming in its own grease. So the black around the edges that you see, that's just, uh, that's just where the fat hits the hot metal. Your meatloaf underneath on a grill like this will not be burnt. It will be spooktacular. No more there. So yeah, nice and liberal. Good coating on that. And uh, I prefer something like a sauce like this rather than just old ketchup. But it's whatever, whatever blows your hair back, right? Um, it's you that's got to enjoy it. So there we go. That's all ready to go. Now back in the smoker to set that up at 375. All right, so the slicing is done. Let's give you an end view there. You see how nice and juicy that is still? You can see the juice coming out of that. And look at that smoke ring. That's, that's what you want. That's the money right there. So anyways, like I said, not a not a huge plating guy, but like to have it look good. So we got our, got our uh, meatloaf and we got some fresh carrots 
and fresh coleslaw. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what's for dinner tonight. So there you have it. You have RV Meatloaf Madness. Guess who's home from work? Yeah, <laughs> and you saw supper's ready, huh? <laughs> Husband of the year right here. So, guys, <laughs> make your wife some good food. Anyways, there's the meatloaf. You saw it plated, ready to go. We're gonna we're gonna hammer that now. So nothing you can't do in your RV. It took me 25 minutes to prepare that supper, and then it takes about an hour and a half, two hours to cook, because uh, you want to throw that first 45 minutes in just at 180 to smoke, remember. So anyways, the end of the video, I will post the recipe of the ingredients for all the people that hated it when I was going some of this and some of this and some <laughs> of this. Hey, when you know your own cooking, you don't need to measure anymore. But anyhow, this is us checking out eating our supper. Have a great day and stay safe, everybody.